Do you want to make awesome God of War style animations like this? Watch this animation analysis to discover how coming right up. Hey, what's up animators? Rusty here from Rusty Animator. And in this channel, we create weekly videos that teach you how to animate at a higher level so that you can quickly reach your dream job in movies or games without massive college debt. Here you'll find a mix of how-to videos, guides, tutorials, and live events just like this one. So if you're new here and you're an animator, consider subscribing. This particular video is a replay of a live animation analysis of God of War that I did with students and members of the Rusty Animator Facebook community. Uh, you can learn so much in terms of creating powerful body mechanics all the way down to how to construct killer dumber reel shots. So let's jump right in. You're going to take away so much from this. So with that, I'm going to share my screen and we'll start digging in. Right now, I've got uh, my iPad set up here so I can do drawovers and, and kind of scrub through all of this. We're first looking at Fabian Johnson's gameplay reel, uh, and it's pretty, pretty, pretty sweet. With all of these reels and all of the, the cool animations that are in them, I think all of you guys will agree that God of War is pretty amazing. Um, so, you know, we're looking at the stuff we could probably take all day. Uh, but I'm going to focus on just three topics to keep this kind of within an hour um, and to keep it practical for you. So we're going to focus on powerful body mechanics, in-game cinematics, and game cycles. With all of it, we're going to be going through body mechanics. Um, but at first, I'll be pointing out more of that. And then I'll point out more of how you can create a cinematic or the workflow challenges of working on a cycle, something like that. So let's get started here. So what we can see here is we got a punch combination. There's the wind up, hit, wind up, hit, and then slam to the ground, right? So let's talk about all of this because this is pretty sweet. Going from a, going from this squashed position here into opening up, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a compressed feeling to an extension. We get this nice line of action through the arms. Um, he's still kind of keeping on target. And the chest is rotating back to let that, to, you know, to move that arm into place and give that some power. So this is pretty, pretty awesome. We re clearly see silhouette wise, you know, what's about to happen. We know that there's a punch coming, right? Because we're getting all these frames of watching it. Um, and it, f it feels good because we're, you know, we're looking at this arm and it's taking its time. The anticipation is tightened up together. We really feel there's a build of energy through here. I mean, look at, look at this crazy pose here. You know, these arms are really curving out through there. And then, you know, we get this nice arc through here with the arm, just the hand, if you're just looking at the hand. And then as it starts to come forward, the spacing starts to get more dramatic, right? Right. Spacing's coming forward, getting this nice twist through the body. I'm going to tell you more about that in a second. And then spacing's getting bigger and bigger and bigger the whole way through. Silhouette's still clear with the arms. We can still see both of the arms separately from here to here. That's nice. And then the impact. Look at this one frame jump. <laughs> Bam. You know, we really feel that gut punch into Kratos here. And this is something that, uh, you know, a lot of people when they're not used to animating or beginners or students or whatever, they'll animate punches and it won't have a lot of impact because you're not getting the spacing jump into the impact. What you want to show is the before, which is all what this is, and then you want to show the result, the after, right? This hit. We're not, a lot of, what a lot of beginners will do is then they'll say, okay, I need to hit him, so I'm going to hit him here. And that eases, 
eases your spacing, eases the impact. It's not, it takes away a lot of the punch from it. Uh, and if you just had these two keys, uh, the computer will, you know, if you got frames in between, will probably start making this very even or make it ease in. And you don't want that. You want that to hit hard, like a ball bounce hitting the ground. You want it to be like, you know, fast, right? So we need that big spacing jump here. And then you can also see it with Kratos himself, how he reacts to that. In one frame, his body goes from being He's kind of got this kind of curve going through him. And then when he gets hit, he's forward, right? We get that spine, or spine flipping forward and his body is really disjointed from, from this position, right? So he, we really feel that impact. And then they have that slow-mo here to make you really see it, you know? This hand just kind of holds there after it arrives. It's like it hit a brick wall, you know? Kratos is a god, so I guess that makes sense. Um, and then as we've got this hold, it's also a perfect anticipation, right? The setting us up for the next punch. Before I talk about that though, let's back up just a minute. Let's talk about the chest. So the chest is really leading this action with the hips. This really starts to twist together to bring this arm around. And if we look at this frame, we really see how the chest has really gotten close to the end of arriving where, where it's supposed to go while this, this arm is dragging behind. And that lead and follow will give you a lot more impact into your work, um, you know, if you're not used to having that in there. And that's something that a lot of beginners miss as well. Making the body feel connected, like it's working together like one machine, you know? And then, what also helps this is we start from this compressed position where he's higher up and then he goes down, right? He goes down to build up some energy for this punch. And then as he falls through, he rises up again. So if you're thinking about your ball bounce, this is why the ball bounce is so important. You know, you, your hips are kind of going up and down all the time um, and forward and backwards and all that. And then when we go in, into this antic, so now we've come full circle. We go back into this antic. What does he do? He goes back down because he just came up again, right? He's winding up for the next one as this punch is holding. And we're reading that because the silhouette is clear, right? Through here. And then again, we have the same thing. We're really easing out of these, slowing out of these positions until the punch comes. So this is like slow-mo, you know, we're reading his anguish, his body is like really far forward. This spacing starts to increase right here. We see this big jump, right? So we jump from here to here. There's motion blur, so it kind of hides a little bit, but the spacing is big, uh, has a big jump. And we can still kind of see it. So the silhouette is nice for us. The, the chest is twist, twisted. Um, you know, we, we haven't really lost track of the arm. And then his chest continues to open up. And here it's, it's really starting to ease in, right? The chest, this is the center of it. Um, it's covered most of the ground already by this, it's like a frame earlier than the arm. So that's how you know that it's really ahead of, ahead of the action, making the arm punch happen. And then we get this great jump, bigger jump in spacing than the last punch where it's, uh, we go from a bend to a straight and the spacing jumps in one frame from somewhere around here to up there, right? So we really feel whack, you know? And what happens to Kratos? Again, he's really in one frame, just knocked completely loose, right? We get this complete spine reversal, right? And we go into, uh, uh, it's a very natural thing, just because of the, the way that the, the motion has been set up. So because of the way the uppercut goes like this, his body is able to kind of come forward a little bit as he's knocked, you know, really almost unconscious. And he drifts perfectly into place where this hand is 
holding after his punch to just, you know, grab his legs and then throw him to the ground. All right. And this is great. We really feel the power here because we feel his momentum slow down, Kratos's. His hips really slow down towards the top of this arc here. He's kind of gone up as high as he's going to go. And then as he starts to grab hold of him, you know, we feel, we feel the spine go from this kind of shape to where it starts to relax just a little. And then again, when this force kicks in here from the other guy, um, the spine reverses again, right? And it's really, we're really feeling that pull through here. How does it work for the guy though down here that's pulling him? Well, we're getting this cool curve here as I, as I already drew there. Getting this cool curve and then we're reading that straighten out a bit and the hips come down, right? Hips come down letting these arms straighten out. So again, we're going from this bend to a straight. And the more we let them, you see how it gets really extreme here. It goes even further behind the body as the hanging behind where the body used to be. It's, you know, it's really stretching out as the body goes down. This is what's giving us the power, the impact of that pull. Uh, if it just stayed like this the whole time, then it would feel like not much happened. But we get that lead and follow where he's kind of coming up and then he's going down as the arms stretch out. So it'll be something like, like this and then wham, right? So we get that lead and follow, hips drop down first, arms are dragging, arms pull, wham, they catch up, hit the ground. And then that's going to carry through. And so the last thing that will be effective will be Kratos. Um, so we go from this extreme straight to just something like this. And we almost get like a spine reversal. It straightens out a little bit. Uh, it's not super exaggerated. And then, you know, we get this bend and he, Kratos is falling through with this action, right? He's come down almost as far as he's going to go, and now he's just kind of settling in, maybe moving a little bit this way, moving maybe just a little bit down. Right now, let's look at Kratos for this impact. How does this work? This whack. Um, so this works pretty well, I think. You know, we get this. Kind of thing going on, and then you know we really see this this shape. So he's being really driven by from the legs. This is dragging the top half of his body is really dragging behind the rest of it um, <clears throat> before he's kind of curled in here on hitting the ground. I think in this case there's room for more exaggeration. Uh, again, we don't know what happened. Maybe, maybe the animator got a note. Maybe they didn't want this kind of style. But I think you know you could, in this case, drag the spine more, the upper body and the head, the, because the closer we get to the head here at the top, um, the more impact we're going to have for this slam. And I feel like it's just a little soft, like from here to here. I'd like to increase the spacing. You know, like we have for those with those punches earlier, where it's like from here all the way up. You know, um, so what what I might do is maybe I'd have maybe I'd have you know the head up here somewhere, and then you know it's really whooping his, his upper body is up higher still. You get you'd probably have to stretch the character almost to a cartoony amount to do that, but. Think it's worth it and then you know keep keep the head up the the spacing up there higher or longer and let's see if this is close since i'm straight ahead and then this frame i th it'd be better i think if we could exaggerate this so it might be some kind of shape like that bam 
you know, something like this gives a lot more impact just because of that spacing change. So longer we can hold him up, up there, the better, right? All right, so that might've helped out a little bit. Let's go to the next clip. And I think this, there's so much cool stuff in this uh, game, but uh, that the animators did, but uh, if gore is not for you, now would be the time not to look. But I think that this animation is probably one of the coolest in the game. Let's play that one more time. Wham! Rides on top like a Bronco cowboy rider. And then, okay, <sighs> you know, that's just, that's so sweet. Oh, brutal. All right. So right off the bat here, this is a cool example of an in-game cinematic that you could do. And, uh, you know, you can include button presses like this, where it's like, you know, very clearly for, for a game reel, uh, a game studio that you're, animating for, and then to get the mechanics to work. To get the mechanics to work here for all of this awesomeness, we get this kind of spine shape into a reversal, right? This is a great anticipation of a hit about to happen, you know? hanging in the air for a while to really sh show it. And then when it comes through, we get the result where he's hitting this guy. And I think we're not getting as much of a spacing jump here because this is a heavy character. You know, he's, it's gonna take some effort for Kratos to punch through him. So I think that's the idea here with not making the spacing more dramatic is they want it to feel like it takes a little bit of more effort for him to punch through. So at first the spacing, there is a jump here for the hit, and then it gets bigger after, you know, he carries through, really forcing it down. And we get this big jump and spacing for the arm to show just how much power he's putting in. And like, once he gets through, that just, you know, goes fast because there's no more resistance to his arm. And we get this great hold here where he's kind of recovering for all of the the damage he just inflicted, all the energy that he took to hit this guy. And this this troll here is super dazed. All right, this is a great time to prepare for the next attack, you know, using this hold as an anticipation. And we get, we really sell the sense of this troll being dazed just by how his head is tilting all over the place. So he grabs hold of him here. And we're again, we're getting this, you're gonna see throughout this, there's this nice push and pull dynamic. So at first Kratos is anticipating, he's, he's going down and then up into the grab onto his head and the troll starts to twist because he doesn't want to be, you know, grabbed by the head. And Kratos, because this is a big monster that's swinging his weight around, you know, is attached from where his arms are and he has to follow along. So the troll is leading the action here. Kratos goes along for the ride, swings himself up top, and then he takes over and he is leading the action because, well, he's the one doing the damage here and the troll's just getting beat up. Um, he's grabbing him basically by the eye sockets and we know that this is working because we, we can feel the power behind this because we see this awkward tilt in the head where it's really emanating from his arms. And we're seeing this again, seeing this uh, squash in the arms, go to a stretch here. Nothing huge, it's kind of subtle. Keep in mind the hips are coming forward, you know, to get into position. And then here again, we go from 
This is a bigger yank. We get this squash here into a straight for this real pull off this. And we can feel because the the troll spine, neck, and head are just like even more exaggerated on how much it's bending back. We can really feel the effort here between that and then his straight arms as he yanks back, you know, his Kratos' hips and everything are going back in this direction. Uh, and the troll has nothing he can do. He just follows suit from the power that's happening here. So Kratos, again, is, is leading the action this way. Troll follows suit after. And then he's going to switch angles here. So he's slowing down to go back this way. And what I love about this is that, you know, a beginner would animate this and then they would just have the troll kind of like dead, but the troll is like trying to get him, you know, and Kratos is fighting all that. So we have this slow down here and then he leans in with his body in this direction. He throws his weight over into it to really pull the troll the other way. And we're getting this nice life in the head there as it tilts around to show us this force change and the camera's helping us as he goes this way the camera's kind of going this way even us that nice push and pull and he's he's basically riding this troll now he's got complete control of him this is the money part for me though because this is the the takedown right and you're basically going from this cool curled over pose into a very clear silhouette. That's that's like a, a tennis racket swing or a baseball swing. And we really get the baseball swing here. Clear silhouette still. There's all this wind up time for us to see the action. And the troll's like recovering from having Kratos' hands in his eye sockets. And he, you know, again, the troll isn't dead. He's still doing something. So you have to kind of manage, you're trying to get this move on with Kratos, but also trying to keep the troll character reacting like, like they would if they were alive defending themselves. And here he's, he's really going for a grab on the Kratos. but Kratos swings just before that happens. So we have this nice long windup, body's really twisted this way for the antique, swing through. Again, chest is leading, the arms. And we get this great straight in there as he comes across and we can see his face to see his power and rage into fighting this monster and it just gets wedged into the mouth right backing up just a second here to make this foot plant feel impactful like he's really catching his weight you can look at these small little details and pick up a lot as well so you see how here if we just watch this heel You know, it eases out, eases out, eases out, and then there's this big spacing jump to to make it feel like like a kick. You know, he's he's planning himself solid to to deliver this attack. Here's where it gets even cooler. Okay, so. We've got this pose that he's holding through in here. He, you know, we know he's relaxing. He's not putting a lot of effort in there because his body is kind of compressed around it. His arms are, um, you know, squashing out. And then he's going into, as he's doing this, he's preparing to go into the next move. So here goes the antic. He's holding here, and then we are going to have this dip down and swing up. OK, 
Okay, so he's just kind of using this as a pendulum to swing across, right? We're getting uh, we're getting an exaggerated hang time, like in real life, he couldn't hang in the same spot so long. And honestly, it's probably just a bit too linear. Like it would be nicer to have a little bit more up and down in there. Um, but you know, it's not a huge deal. So, so we're getting this squash. He's going into a jump and we get this beautiful line of action where it's a stretch as he takes off to reach the peak of that jump. There's not a lot of strain on the ax. Just kind of staying there as he swings across. And then as he reaches the apex and starts to go down, we're gonna have this shape change in the spine to show that, okay, the gravity, gravity is starting to take hold and he's gonna put some kind of effort into this ax now. So we have this angle and then as he start, his, his hips come around and he gets straightens out to come down and land, this is the great thing he starts to go down with speed as the ax starts to go up. So we get this really powerful lever and the, you know, the animator is really, Fabian Johnson here is really holding the ax up high as long as he can. They're getting a bit of like some elbow break to keep the shape of like, I'm letting the arms hang behind because I'm going to yank this thing down, right, to, to show the force. So we get this great straight as his body lands. So we go again from this like squashed shape into a straight for the pull down, right? Kratos' body lands, the arms are extended, pulling the troll down. The troll is still up high, right? The, there hasn't been enough force exerted just yet. And then here, he's coming down. He can't help that, right? Boom, one frame, smack, head hits the ground. Pretty awesome stuff. And the more that you can get this again this shape change of this curl in into a reversal and back the more that we will feel that impact it's up to whatever your work the style that you're going for the style that your studio is going for is how much you can push that but that um, that will give you more impact and power in your body mechanics again you're getting clear silhouettes there's a lot of lead and follow um, there's just a lot of weight with weight uh, all the shape change and spacing is happening and the overlap. All right. So then you just hold and that the camera is really helping the impact here. So that's what's happening there. And this is cool. But and it continues, it gets better from here. This is epic. So before, I mean, this is a great example of talking about doing an in-game cinematic style piece. Uh, this feels very much that way. We're going to talk about that next, but I want to stop and pause to kind of talk about both of these clips right now with you and ask you if you have any questions. All right, let's keep rocking and rolling then. Let's look at this clip for cinematic purposes. If you're going to make uh, in-game cinematic and you're applying for a, you're planning to apply for a game studio, right? These in-game cinematics really or like like a takedown uh a kill move finisher these kind of shots make make fantastic uh starters for the demo reel and enders to your reel it's like your, your premium stuff right so uh this would be the most epic shot that you do uh that's what you should be having in mind if you're going to do like an in-game cinematic for a demo reel shot um and you're going to be aiming to provide this organic asymmetrical epic feeling. Um, you can totally, totally imp include button presses like this here to kind of show that you're thinking about how it would work in game and that lets a studio know that you kind of know, you know, how to animate for a game. So it's great. Um, and then you can also, you know, include cameras like you have, like this, uh, like this animation here to sell the impact. So the camera is working throughout all of this um, battle 
And then of course, it really helps to sell the impact here when it hits the ground, right? We get the spacing, but then also we get all this camera action. That extra camera shape to show the impact to make it harder than, than it would be um, without that move. Um, how do you invent these kind of Demerill shots? Uh, this is, this really all comes down to uh, like four things, okay? Uh, four main things. Your character, right? What is your character's personality? What is your character's physicality? Are they, are they big and strong? Are they um, short and fast? Um, that will determine, help you determine what your animation will, the, the attacks, uh, the way that they act, all that will carry over. So you really have to know who your character is. And another, another cool thing about this is Kratos is a god, right? So he's got abilities, he's got superhuman strength. You better believe that that, that influences the animation, right? Uh, the fact that he has this superhuman strength allows him to uh, swing a troll around and knock him to the ground, right? Um, the other thing, the enemy. Uh, you know, you're animating Kratos, but then who is he fighting against? Is he a big troll? Is he like this zombie thing? Is he an elf that flies? You know, all those factors uh, change the dynamic. And then, uh, you know, the other character here is the axe, the kind of weapon, the items that they have, that they have properties. Like this axe can be thrown um, and then it has ice on it and it can be recalled. That is not by accident, and all of the animations that you see in this game, uh, you know, use that to its fullest to to make it feel epic, right? Um, and then it comes down to the type of move you do. So the choice to have Kratos grab this troll by the eye sockets and then throw an axe in his mouth and yank him to the ground. You know, we have this aerial like hold and yank to the ground that move makes it amazing you know this makes it very epic so these are the four categories that will help you invent your own cinematic and make it awesome and it doesn't have to be super complicated it could just be one two moves and this isn't something that you want to you don't want to start with a very complicated version if um, you know if you're a beginner and just learning you could start with something simpler like uh, some of the in-game cycles i'm about to show you so Let's talk about that and uh, let's move on to Roberto Clemente's reel. I hope I'm pronouncing everybody's names right in case they end up seeing it, but uh, seeing this. So if you're thinking about having a game animation, definitely think about having a magical uh, weapon of some kind or any like uh, a weapon of any property or an ability for your character because you can come up with an animation like this. Just the simple idea of having an axe return to Kratos's hand allows you to instantly say okay we could fling it and fling it back and make it an attack combo right it really opens the door. We, do, You know you don't think it's a big deal now but if you just gave him a regular axe you may not even think of doing something like that. Now let's let's look at game cycle stuff. Let's talk about game cycle stuff. So we'll watch a few more of these. Yank forward, smash. When you're doing a game cycle, you need to think about the complexity of the game cycle that you want to create. And I mean, usually a game cycle is going to repeat, right? So you're going to have an idle, so a stance of preparing an idle staying in place to an attack back to idle that's a, that's a simple cycle you can you can complicate this of course if you want to do idle attack attack idle attack attack idle and then you have an even more complicated version which might be something like this it's like idle lift off airtime landing idle um, it doesn't have to be complicated to be cool though i mean Let's let's look at let's look at a couple of examples. So we've got attack, 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 hit, 
bam, here's a great, there's a great example here. So these, these are very cool, right? Like seeing boom, 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 all that. This, this is, uh, you know, obviously very cool, but could you just have one attack and have it look awesome? Well, boom, it's pretty cool. Boom, pretty cool. These are, these are just one hits, you know? That's, um, that one's awesome. You get this sweet twirl with the ax through here where he, you know, he essentially just lets it flip up and then the other hand comes to catch it as it's still spinning to go into one leap and you get this slow-mo hammer down, you know, with this effect. And you could do this in Maya, you know, you could have some transparent cubes or spheres or whatever that you know, several of them that are animated that they just kind of scale out and fade away. Um, it won't look as sweet as the ice, but you'll get the idea and it, it'll still look pretty cool to have that in your animation to show this like impact into the ground. And you could, you could even animate these guys if you wanted to, or you'd not at all. And that would be a fairly simple, straightforward shot to, to do. And you only have to worry about a few things. You worry about this pose um, and the result here, the smash, and then the, the idle stuff. You don't have to do something like this, but again, this is where it comes in handy to know what your character can do and has. So this axe being magical, you know, it can do these ice blasts and do these cool like anti-gravity twirls almost. You can get away with a lot because it's magical. Um, and then another thing when you're working on these game cycles that's helpful um, is thinking about rhythm, right? So let's look uh, again back at some of these clips here. So Rhythm, when, I, when I'm talking about rhythm, I'm talking about the, the beats of the attack. So it'd be like one hit, two hit. It could be like one, two, three. It could be one, two, three, four, you know, and it, it gives it a nice flow. You, you have a very clear understanding of what, what kind of uh, feeling you're trying to give your animation, right? Um, so here, if we watch this, one, two, you know, it's simple simple just two beats but it's cool with the type of move that you have and then you have something more complicated one two three four five one two three four five you know you have that kind of thing going on it's more complicated but you can see how you can set your moves together not every move has a different tempo to it it doesn't it doesn't take as long it doesn't last as long right this is another cool example. So of just one cool move, you know. And what I like about it is that a few things with the mechanics. So he's in this hunched over position, right? And the arms are out. You know, the arms are back to, to get ready to whip this thing. Uh, and you can see that there is sliding going on. This is the game engine thing. So, um, but that's fine. Normally an antic might do the opposite, but he's already in this position. He just, they just go to a more extreme, Roberto here is going to a more extreme pose than this. Going back. So we're really seeing this chain hold here forever. We know what's coming, right? We really feel Kratos go put a lot of effort into this. This If he's putting all this effort going back, that stuff's going to whip forward hard. So that's exactly what happens. We got this nice line of action through here. As it finishes, you know, and he's... There is this slight change where it's it's doing that kind of shape and it came from this kind of shape. So if this was a beginner, they wouldn't have that shape change throughout the body um, to show, make it more dynamic, make it more um, realistic. 
have that spine change, you know, it would be, it would be very flat like this. It would probably just be uh, a lean backwards in this direction only, and it would feel very rigid. But even though we've got this camera back to, and this character is just kind of doing this move, there is some twisting going on here in the body. There is some spine shape change from side to side, right? And then another cool note here is as he finishes this attack and we got this sweet overlap where we get this straight to a bend. He catches the swords after the impact has happened. And this arm is straighter. It's different than this arm. This makes it asymmetrical. It doesn't make it so robotic. You know, as he catches it, it stays that way. This arm is way more relaxed and this is straighter out. It's like he's, this chain has gone farther than this one, so it's easier to catch. And this kind of thing would happen in real life. And this is the kind of asymmetry that you want to build into your work to make it feel even more organic. And he, because this is more relaxed, he gets a handle on this sword a lot easier. And this arm has to travel a lot more to get relax and get back into an idle pose, right? It's a small thing, but it makes it just feel so natural. And it's not a ton of work. He's just kind of working with him on pose and, and making the most of it. This is another, uh, this is another in-game, you could call it cinematic thing. I can't remember in-game if the camera gets locked here. Uh, you know, when you're doing these killing, finishing moves, um, but I think they do. Uh, and, and so it's kind of like an in-game cinematic in that it's, it's, uh, it's a bit free form if you don't have to uh, worry about the camera from all angles. Um, and then let's play this out first. So this is another potential demo reel starter or ender. If you're uh, planning to make a game demo reel, this would be an epic shot to have in here. Um, Again, brutal, but that's got a war. Um, so we got this curled in shape. You go into a wind up for reversing the body here. Going up high as well for the antic. Arm straight now, right? Helps the carry through the impact. Look at the spacing change. And then it gets lodged in there. That's a very cool choice. I mean, if you're animating this, you have to think about it. Maybe in a studio, maybe in this studio when they're working on this, they tell, you know, they tell the animator, they say, hey, uh, you know, we want the axe to get lodged in the character. But if you think of that on your own when you're making a demo reel, uh, you know, it makes the piece, piece so much more creative. It makes the piece so much more interesting when you're thinking about wedging an ax into a character and having them split, you know, and then having it get stuck there. So that's what makes this piece really cool as well. So it's kind of like the, the troll deal where the ax gets wedged. He's hunched over again with the shape change from this. And also note, that the chest twisted towards camera to open him up towards camera so we could see his face and then it twisted away. So these are the little things that most people don't put into their work that makes it organic. And then when he needs to get this out, right, he's got to straighten out the arm, to kind of give it a yank. He's, he's coming up. He's coming up to give it a pull and we know that it's wedged in there and that he's levering on it because of that ax is moving as well. So he goes up, goes to put his foot onto the guy to really kick him off the ax, you know? This makes it cool as well because he could just do it all with the arms. You could decide as an animation that it's just going to be an arm thing. But no, they say maybe the coolest thing, the coolest option here is to have him put his foot on on the, uh, the werewolf here and kick, kick, him, kick him loose from the axe. <laughs> and it gets really gory. And then it's also a decision to say, okay, it's going to still stay in there and I'm going to have to kick him again. <laughs> or 
what stands out to me right away, um, again, is just seeing the werewolf get kicked here at the end. And I'm just watching his hips travel and then they're going this direction and suddenly they, they come backwards. That's uh, again, uh, a game thing where it's trying to hook back up into the game engine and, and loop properly in place. Uh, animation wise, that stuff takes away from the physics feeling correct, uh, the weight feeling right. So if you're gonna put something like this on your reel, you don't wanna have anything like that because you're not limited by a game engine. You have to be better we don't have the same limitations that these guys have. And how we get impact in this kick is kind of the same as the punches. One, two, three. Like there's, there's uh, ease into this position where we have a lot of frames and then it quickly just kind of kicks through and also the body, you know, we're kicking the weight back to really put force into that. And then he's got to recover. These hips come back and down so that he can come up again and deliver another kick. And look at that street that we get here this time. Where that's a cool pose and a cool pose change as well from this. You get that compression and extension to really show power. Any questions on all of this? It was a lot. Cool. All right. One more animation to cover and it won't take that long but I think it's worth talking about. So it's gonna culminate kind of everything that we said. Um, this one, it's kind of like walking the line between a game cycle and a cinematic, just because of how epic it is. It's not just like a one, two combo. It's, uh, it feels very dynamic. Um, I think the camera's pretty locked and it can kind of represent a game cycle or, um, or cinematic because of that. So let's play it out. Man, pretty epic. Awesome. So first thing we note is we got this slow-mo to really feel this hit. It's like, okay, you've got this character now. Your, your attack worked in the game, right? And it's really <laughs> letting us show off as well as animators if you're building in that kind of slow-mo. And then this is one of the things that I really love about this. Uh, is we get this sweet line of action where these characters are clearly connected and it's an appealing shape. It's not just like that. Um, and then we really can see the dominance. We can, we can see what's going on physically with both characters that show, you know, uh, who's winning and who's losing. Um, this pose is very uh, aggressive and in control. And this pose is very, uh, I'm fleeing very clearly, which is with the pose itself, very open, very uh, turned away from us. They, they want this character, this elf wants nothing to do, um, you know, with Kratos. He wants out of here. He obviously got tackled before this hurt right? So this all connects. I need out of here. Nope, you can't go anywhere. You know, we get this beautiful push-pull here uh, and sense of character in this shot. That's why I, I like it so much. Um, and Kratos, you know, he's fighting this guy uh, just a little bit. We, You have to show some kind of force uh, to show effort, to show impact. Um, so this guy tries to leave, his spacing gets pretty broad, then all of a sudden his hip kind of stays stuck for a few frames. He realizes he can't go anywhere. Kratos is kind of yanking back, right? They're both fighting each other here, so they kind of stay in place, but the body just kind of wiggles around with the limbs. And then 
Kratos is like, okay, I'll put more effort into this. The hips come down and then comes across. Get this twist. And that's when this guy starts to lose big time. Like he really can't go anywhere. He gets this other hand onto onto the staff here. And I love the uh, the change in shape to go from this very clear silhouette of I'm grasp going to grasp this thing. We get a lot of frames that show us what's about to happen so that we don't miss it. Uh, and then we get into this straight from a bend. This is so clear that he's about to put force into this. So this extension allows us the room to do this, which shows that he's really gaining control of that staff. And this guy being on with one hand, he's like fighting for his life. So he, you know, since he can fly, he just rises up to get two hands on it as well and to yank. And just as he gets up to the top, you know, Kratos, Kratos pulls it down, right? And we see that he's still trying to hang on because we, we see his, his arms like this. And we get that shape change here where it's very dead armed, elbow almost locked out, and then back to this relaxed shape. They're, they're not using, he's not using too much of his body because they're, they're trying to show that he is much stronger than this guy, right? He can just kind of lean forward and give it a pull. He doesn't really need to dip his hips down or anything and really pull his legs. This hit is sweet. So just like we learned with all of the earlier animations, this hit impact. has a good spacing jump and we get this immediate one frame result from the character to show the hit, right? He's like this, then he's immediately knocked the other way uh, and the face is turned from us. Again, the chest is doing the work here to pull this around and we're getting that nice straight to show that there is power put into that before it relaxes and gives us somewhere to go to show that, okay, I've done my move. Now I'm relaxing, winding up, anticipating for the next one. And he, it's, it's the perfect occasion too to really say, okay, this character's kind of knocked out of it. He's dazed uh, in his hold here. He doesn't see what's about to happen and we're watching Kratos get ready for the final blow, right? Where he, he's going down and he gets into this Olympic javelin toss pose. And then straight through. So here are your key poses, right? There's this and there's this. Uh, I might have one, just looking at the spacing of the spear here, it might be cooler to have that impact, you know, the spacing of the spear not slow down here because there's a big jump here and then it kind of slows and then it goes. It could be showing, it's debatable, so it's like it's showing the the resistance of having him go into a character before it carries him, but how far he goes, I would say just make the spacing further like bigger than than this one to show that it's really the speed is instantly kicked into gear um, maybe why it's in here is to really show the impact so we see what happens that it really hit this guy but that's potentially a way to just improve the power of this and here again is a really great example of letting the chest go first so the chest is really twisting this way and this elbow is like breaking backwards, you know? 
going from this regular shape to really show that drag, keep that hand back here as long as we can, as close as we can, so that it's got a, a really great snap as it comes out. It feels powerful. Just a little bit of that follow through with the twisting this way and then coming back to, to your idle pose. But an epic piece. Anim Q of the week. What was your number one key takeaway from this God of War animation analysis? Share in the comments below. And remember that, you know, as an animator, giving feedback not only helps other animators, but it also helps you develop your animation eye. So share your number one key takeaway in the comments below. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Subscribe for more videos just like this. And if you want to be part of the next live animation analysis, join the Rusty Animator Facebook group. Just click or tap the screen right there. Or if you want to see another video from Rusty Animator, just click or tap the screen right here. Uh, until next time on Rusty Animator, happy animating.